evening, ladies and gentlemen. Very happy to see you here, um, especially a Friday evening, and um, and such a wonderful place that NLB has uh, provided. It is indeed a pleasure and in fact uh, an honor once again to be able to do this, to introduce our from our distinguished speaker. Um, I say once again because uh, we actually did a book launch of this wonderful book that you see today um, over there that um, we just launched a few months ago. This talk uh, is actually a spin-off from that book launch. Apparently it was so successful and provocative if I can say that NLB actually caught NLB's attention and we are very happy to share it with the public with more people. It was held in NUS, Bookhaven, a bookshop where we thought um, maybe it was not uh, that accessible to all. Also, we think it's very timely, very apt at this juncture because, um, well, we do know it's SG50 and um, even more timely because um, two months ago our founding father just passed on. So. Everyone is, is in this reflecting mood, uh, reflecting and, 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 and thinking about us, Singapore. Some people commented that um, I think we are looking a bit too much behind. And that's maybe quite true. Uh, maybe we sh it's somehow, uh, sometimes we should take note of what's to come, the future, the next 50 the SG-100. And I think this talk today, uh, a spin-off from the Southeast Asian one that Prof Leo, what he will share with us um, on this, on Singapore itself, focusing, um, is something that can really inspire us to think deeper, look further. Okay, I was intrigued for the first time during the book launch when he threw the question, um, is Singapore a nation? <laughs> you know, uh, when someone asks this question, it's definitely going to draw attention and, and set people thinking. And he went beyond. He didn't even think that there's many nations around. In fact, probably all of Southeast Asian ones are, are in progress. That was refreshing. <laughs> and I think um, we'll get to hear more today, especially focusing on Singapore which I think is closer to our heart, and I really look forward to that. Now to introduce our speaker, Professor Leo Suradnata. Actually, I don't think we need to, ex to introduce much. Okay, he has, he's a, such a veteran and senior in this area. Um, my mentor, you know, and he's taught in NUS, NTU. He's been director of uh, Chinese Heritage Center, NTU. He's now a visiting senior fellow at ISIS. So um, we look forward to more important and, 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 and groundbreaking research from him at ISIS. But for now, let's hear what he can share, he, he has in mind about um, Singapore as a nation. Prof Leo, please. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and friends, uh, Good evening. First of all, I would like to express my sincere thanks uh, to the two organizers, namely uh, the uh, World Scientific and NLB, for um, organizing the talk tonight. And I'm very delighted to be able to talk about nation building in Southeast Asia, the case of Singapore. Um, all of us know that Singapore is going to celebrate the 50th birthday. Yeah. Uh, therefore, it's very proper, I think, for us, for me at least, to talk about nation, bu nation building in Southeast Asia with special reference to Singapore. I do not go straight to talk about Singapore because I believe that if you want to understand Singapore nation or Singapore nation state, then you need to understand Southeast Asia and beyond. Therefore, <coughs> I will talk about 
the general things beyond Southeast Asia and then come to Southeast Asia and end up in Singapore. I hope you'll bear with me. Like nation and nation states, these are two very attra attractive terms. But nation is the most used and misused term in common discourse. Nation usually refers to country or state. For example, the United Nations and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Even when we talk about Singapore, Singapore is a small nation. We use the term nation. But this is a very popular usage. But in social sciences, nations means different things. Most of the social scientists will not, have not really come to an agreement. Nevertheless, you can identify two schools of thoughts on nation and nation state. One school <coughs> equate nation with ethnic or ethnic group. A nation is an ethnic group. The second is considering nation as a multi-ethnic group. The first school of thought was represented by a leading political scientist in the United States. His name is Walker Connor. And and the others was represented by many more, like Rupert Emerson, Anthony Smith, and others. Okay, what is an ethnic? What is an ethnic or what is an ethnic group? According to Max Weber, this ethnic, the term in fact was from Greek, ethnos which means that a group of people who shared, who shared common ancestry. And ethne, the term was used, was used uh, by the French scholars and when it was used by the American scholars or the British scholars, then they often use ethnicity and an ethnic group because ethnic itself is an adjective rather than a noun. So <clears throat> this is one concept of ethnic group, shared common ancestry, real or imaginative. And most of the time it is imaginative rather than real. In addition to this, it is also argued that in ethnic groups, they also shared the same tradition, the same language, and so forth. Because of this, Walker Corners argue that ethnic group, in fact, is a nation. But when you look at the ethnic group, which equal to a nation, it is very difficult for us to find the examples. It is called uh, ethnic nation, but at that particular time, it was called it's a nation, and the state is called nation state. But more of the countries, in fact, consists of a number of ethnic groups. Therefore, they are multinational state. Let us look at the argument of Walker Corner. This Walker the Corner uh, argued that in 1973, when he wrote a very well-known paper, then in the United Nations, there were 180 states 
what people call 180 nations, and of which only 14, in fact 12 rather than 14, because two of the countries at that time were not members of the United Nations, were so-called nation-state, a real nation-state, which means that the state consists of only one ethnic group. These 14 states were as follows, Austria, Denmark, West and East Germany, Iceland, Ireland, Japan, North and South Korea, Lesotho in Africa, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway and Portugal. This was in accordance with the argument of Walker Corner. Yet, you can still argue some of the countries on this list are not really ethnic nation or nation state. Out of 180 states, 168 states, in fact, are multi-ethnic nation. In the words of Walker Corner, is multi-national nation. Now, these 168 states or nation state, in fact, according to Rupert Emerson, you know, they are also nation. In his well-known book called From Empire to Nation, he defined nation in the following way. It has something to do with common heritage, which include language and history, customs and so forth, and common destiny. I just uh, read here a few lines. It's a nation is a community of people who feel that they belong together in the double sense that they share deeply significant elements of a common heritage and that they have a common destiny for the future. In order to defend the nation, the members of this group are ready to die. So it was also very psychological, emotional, and so forth. A leading sociologist called Anthony Smith examines the situation and concluded that we can identify at least two types of nation in the world today. One is called ethnic nation or ethno nation, a nation which is based on one ethnic group, and the other one was called civic nation or social nations. These are multi-ethnic nations. The majority, I would uh, say, are these civic nation or social nation. Social nations were created in the West. The idea of nation, in fact, was quite novel uh, to us here. And the earlier a nation in the West only emerged I think around perhaps 18th century. And one, a few of the earlier nations were France, Germany, and England. Now in Southeast Asia, we also have nation, a nation state. But the emergence of Southeast Asian nation were very recent. It took place only in the 20th century. Before the 20th century, we can safely say that there was no nation in Southeast Asia. Therefore, the emergence of Southeast Asian nation was much behind their Western counterparts, was almost one and two hundred years later. And the question can be asked here, yeah, how did the Southeast Asian nation emerge? Why did it take so long to rise? I would argue it has something to do with Western colonialism. It is linked to Western colonialism. Without Western colonialism, perhaps I think there would, would have not been 
the nation states that we know today. As all of us know, and the Western powers, you know, the, uh, the British, the French, the Spanish, and the Dutch came to Southeast Asia, and they conquered the population. And after conquering the population, they occupied the place and they withdrew the colonial boundaries, arbitrarily, and built their own colonial states exploited uh, the areas you know, and benefited a lot from, from the exploitations of the countries. But toward the end, they also need the local manpower. By the 20th century, that education, or Western education, was introduced to Southeast Asia. And then you, ha you have a group of Western educated elite or Western educated intellectuals in Southeast Asia who were not of the same ethnic groups, but they came together in a school, they uh, began to know each other, they began to realize that they have the same problems you know, and their dislikes, uh, the colonial rule and so forth. Hence, there was a kind of nationalist movement. One writer, which is very well known, is called Karl Deutsch, suggested a concept called social communication. He argued that colonial power or colonialism, in fact, provided the people in developing countries with a sort of social communication to make them realize that in fact, they have th the same problem, the same issue, then they wanted to resolve the problem together. This sort of nationalism was led by Western educated intellectuals or elite whose aim was to get rid of uh, col colonial rulers and to establish a modern, a modern nation state in accordance with the colonial state boundaries. I like to emphasize here that this, is, this was led by a Western educated elite whose aim was to get rid of colonial rulers and to establish a modern nation state along the colonial boundaries. So this kind of movement is very different from the traditional resistance movement in which it was led by traditional elite. And the purpose was to restore the kingdom, not to establish a modern nation state. Because of this, I also want to argue that the modern, the Western educated elite in Southeast Asia, they established a modern state which was not based on the kingdom of the past. Malaysia was not based on the empire of Malacca. Indonesia was not based on Sriwijaya or Majapahit. Even Burma, for instance, or Myanmar was not based on pagan dynasty. This was based on the colonial state and transformed into a modern nation. Once the <coughs> people of Southeast Asia achieve independence. Within one country, you have so many ethnic groups, then you would start a kind of nation building. You want to have people to come together and make the nation state prosperous. You want the allegiance, allegiance of the ethnic group 
transferred their allegiance from ethnic group to nation. If you are successful in establishing nation, that means that you are successful in shifting the loyalty of the ethnic group from their own group to a larger unit called nation. This is what I, I believe, you know, is the definition of nation building. If you look at the nation in the, in the Southeast Asian region, you would discover that this nation, this, this nation not only new, but even the terms, you know, sometimes were creations of the colonial power or they emerge only after the coming of the colonial powers. In the Southeast Asian languages, you do not really have the word nation. The word a nation which was later discovered, say in Indonesian, Malaysian, Malay, Bangsa. The term bangsa, in fact, was from Sanskrit. The original meaning was just people. And then you have suku. Suku, in fact, is ethnic group. 